Welcome back. So far in this course, we learn to create Azure account. And then we learn to create Databricks workspace in the Azure cloud. Right? And then I gave you a walkthrough of the Databricks workspace UI. When we created our Databricks workspace in the Azure cloud, I mentioned that Databricks workspace is a serverless application running somewhere in the cloud, right? And we can access that serverless application through the web UI, uh, through a URL. And I showed you that URL. So what is Databricks workspace? And Databricks workspace is a serverless application running in the Azure cloud. And we access it through the web UI. But how it is architected and how other things are architected uh, for a Databricks workspace in the Azure cloud. So let's try to understand that in this lecture. I'll try to help you understand the Databricks workspace architecture, the layout in the Azure cloud. So this diagram represents the same. Uh, you can see we have one box here which represents the Azure Databricks control plane. So control plane is basically the Databricks software, the serverless application. So when we create a workspace, Azure will create a Databricks or Azure Databricks control plane. It's a serverless application. Within that control plane, there are many things like your Databricks web application. Uh, Databricks web application is running uh, in the control plane and we access that web application using the Databricks workspace UI uh, in the browser tab, right? And within the Databricks workspace, we can create notebooks. We create notebooks which are uh, created in the workspace itself. I'm not talking about notebooks in the repos. I'm create, talking about the notebooks in the workspace. So those notebooks also sit inside the Databricks control plane. Uh, we saw in the Databricks workspace, we have a menu item for workflows where we can create different kinds of jobs. So all those job configurations, queries, alerts, whatever uh, objects we are creating in the Databricks workspace, all those configurations are also stored in the control plane. And we also saw a cluster menu, right? We can create Databricks uh, clusters. So all those cluster configurations, how to create cluster, what kind of cluster do we want to create? All those cluster configurations are also stored in the Databricks control plane. The idea is that the Databricks application is a serverless application which runs in a virtual control plane uh, in the Azure cloud, uh, which is basically a web-based application offered to us through the Databricks web UI. And all the data that we create, uh, basically configuration data, like notebook, job, and queries, uh, configurations, workflows, cluster creation configurations, all those configurations, all those configuration data is also stored in the control plane. We don't have uh, direct access to the control plane from the backend or from anywhere uh, else except the web UI. We can access the control plane through the web UI. And that's what uh, this item represents here. A user is sitting outside the control plane and they can access the control plane or the functionality offered by the control plane using the web-based UI. And the credential verification and all that is implemented through single sign-on. We can also access the control plane or uh, functionalities from the control plane using the uh, REST based API clients or command line tools. So those things are also possible 
uh, we will be sitting outside the control plane and access the control plane functionality basically workspace notebooks cluster configurations job configurations all we can access through the rest based apis so that's how the control plane is designed uh, but when we create cluster in the uh, using the databricks workspace those clusters are the physical or virtual machines right and we as a customer need to pay for those virtual machines to azure cloud so those cluster virtual machines are created in our azure subscription or customers azure subscription and that uh, space is known as customers azure subscription or it is known as data plane right so this portion is known as data plane and this portion is known as control plane so control plane is created uh, for databricks uh, but data plane or everything shown here is created in our azure subscription so when you create clusters you will be using virtual machines those virtual machines are created in your uh, azure subscription you can see those virtual machines you can log into those virtual machines you can terminate those virtual machines you have access to the virtual machines because it is created in your um, azure account now next thing is about the data um, for your uh, data engineering projects you will be creating data you will be collecting data you will be creating intermediate data you will be creating results data so where will you store that data for data you can create uh, storage layer so when we create databricks for the first time by default it will create one uh, in the azure it will create one default storage layer uh, which is workspace root storage or root dbfs uh, dbfs is databricks file system we will learn about it uh, in more detail as we progress with the course but when you create a workspace every workspace in the azure cloud comes with one default root account uh, or root storage layer which is dbfs root storage layer for your workspace and that is created in your uh, data plane in your customers uh, azure subscription you can see that you might not be able to access that easily because it is secured by workspace uh, by databricks workspace to access this root storage you have to come to the databricks workspace and you can access it from the databricks workspace itself but if you try to access it directly from your cloud account or from your azure account you might face different kind of difficulties and you are not supposed to access it from directly from your a cloud account uh, but this is not the storage layer which we should be using for uh, storing our data for the data lake or for the lake house or whatever data we want to ingest in our platform for doing the data processing this is not the place where you should be ingesting your data in a best practice in a typical case we create a separate storage account and that's known as your data storage account or data storage layer so in most of the projects we will create a separate storage layer in our uh, uh, azure subscription so that we have a full control of it and we keep data in our own custody and we secure it in the way we want to secure it so that's how the architecture is the main point that we should understand and take away is that databricks workspace is deployed in two planes the first plane is known as control plane uh, which is in full control of databricks itself we cannot directly uh, access it 
and the control plane or things in the control plane the only way to access things in the control plane is through the ui or through the rest apis everything else is created in the data plane and data plane is in our azure subscription we are in full control and we have to pay for it also uh, so everything else means mainly clusters which is compute infrastructure and data storage layer which is our storage layer we will learn how to create clusters we will learn how to use this root storage layer how to use or create our own data storage layer all that we will learn but as of now uh, all we want to understand is uh, clusters and data are always in the data plane in the customers uh, azure subscription databricks workspace and all the configurations are in control plane and that's all about it so that's all for this lecture uh, see you again in the next lecture keep learning keep growing